Christmas and welcome to the final day of my crafty advent series. I'm actually wearing my Christmas jumper whilst filming this voiceover and it's a musical one. Hope I don't get demonetised for playing that in it. So today's video um, is one of my favourites actually and it was actually using um, like hardly any stamps really it's mostly hand drawn which is a great um, like money saving thing for making your Christmas cards with as well so um, I'm picking out some circular and um, bauble shaped uh, dies um, the brown ones are obviously spellbinders and the silver ones are just tonic nesting dies um, I'm tracing one large one um, onto this card and then I'm just going to draw in um, a kind of bauble cap shape, some um, horizontal lines around the bauble and a chain. Um, and for this card I am doing three baubles and then just adding in those details again. It's um, not too difficult to make a circle look like a bauble, you know, just a kind of little rectangle element with a scallop bottom edge and then a sort of scribbly chain leading up to the top of the card really um, makes a circle look like a bauble. And then for this card, I decided to use some more fancy shaped um, like ornaments uh, from a Spellbinder set. Um, it's a little bit more tricky to trace around them because the cut line is like in the middle of a large, wide bit of um, metal. So uh, you've got to sort of fiddle with that a bit. I think maybe the circular ones are easier to do. And actually, I think I preferred all of the circular ones too. Um, so... For this trio of them, I'm just adding in a few horizontal lines. It's a bit tricky to see because obviously I was drawing in pencil because I'm going to watercolour these so I didn't want the lines to be too obvious. Um, but I'm just adding in a few different details like the horizontal lines and um, in some places marking in where I want some snowflakes to be which I end up stamping on in the end because snowflakes are quite tricky to uh, draw yourself and make them look nice and intricate. So. Um, I cheated and used some stamps for that part, but um, it's, this is such a, a simple um, Christmas card to do, and especially if you're doing the one with the, the one bauble in the centre, which I, th I think is my favourite actually, um, you know, you could, you could batch make like 50 of them in a day if you were really um, prepared and everything, and in the right mood. Um, so I'm using my Gansai Tambi watercolours to colour in my baubles. And um, I want there to be white elements on most of the baubles, so I'm using the black and watering it down a lot um, just to draw on the shadows for the bauble first and add a bit of colour to the, um, the bauble cap as well because um, they're going to be silver. Um, I find this just helps with the colouring. If you've already got on um, a little bit of shading that's going over the entire bauble, I think when you come to add colour to some sections, having that shading already there really helps um, you to paint it in and give it that real 3D kind of a look. Um, and then for ones that are in front of each other, I'm just adding some extra shadow uh, where the baubles overlap so you kind of get that illusion that they're hanging one in front of each other. I also want to uh, water down the Gansai Tambis. I often see people in videos using them uh, neat straight from the little pan, but you can, like, if you had a normal watercolour set, you would uh, take some of the colour out of the pan and put it into the palette that's like the lid of the box or something. So um, the Gansai Tambis aren't really any different to that, apart from the fact that you don't get a palette in the set, so you kind of feel like you don't need to use a palette. But, um, uh, taking a bit out and watering it down really helps to give that more of a proper watercolour look with the paints. I, I'm pretty sure that's all really obvious, but I th you know, thought I would just say it all. Um, so for this one I'm using that gorgeous teal colour that comes in the 36 pan set. And I'm going to do teal, blue and green for this card. And again, um, add, having that shadow already there really helps. And you can just um, intensify the shadow in the areas that are kind of white they're not really white because you're putting the grey colour into them but 
it gives the illusion that they're more white than the coloured areas. And don't forget when you're using watercolours they do tend to dry a bit lighter um, than they look when you put them straight onto the card as well. So my favourite colour combination for Christmas is purple and silver. So uh, that's the colour scheme for this card. It does look a bit crowded this one because the ornaments are so big. Um, but I think it still gives a nice effect. Even The other two are my favourite. But... And I just keep um, working from one card to another waiting for the sections to dry. Because you don't want to do, um, like where I just painted, you don't want to do those two bits whilst the first one was still wet because the two colours would just merge into each other. And I keep adding um, extra colour to the bauble caps pretty much every time I go back to that specific card just to deepen up the colour and give that uh, proper, like, rich effect to them. And you can use um, little brush strokes to kind of create the, the dimples that go round a bauble cap as well. So I'm using some sparkle pens. Um, that one that I squeezed out first is supposed to be silver, but it's gone a bit brown. Um, and the other one's just a clear one. So I'm just um, adding the clear over the coloured areas and then I'm going to add the silvery brown colour um, over the top of the um, grey um, bauble cap areas to give that a little bit of sparkle to them. It does kind of disturb the watercolour a little bit but I quite like um, the effect that you get. And again, I keep switching from card to card, um, doing the different sections, so that um, you're making sure that different parts of the baubles are drying before you move on to the, the next part that's um, adjacent to the first bit you painted. For this one, I'm adding in a little bit of that silver sparkle, or actually on this one too, adding a little bit of the silver sparkle into the kind of white areas, um, just to give them a little bit of... A little bit of extra colour and, and the sparkle as well. Then I decided I want to deepen up some of the shadows, especially on this bauble. It's a very um, fancy, ornate kind of a shape, so it's going to have lots of um, highlights and shadows on it. Now, this is my favourite part. Um, this really makes it your own. Um, I'm just using a fine black pen. I'm pretty sure this is one of the um, Wilco ones that I've talked about before in videos. Um, and I'm literally just adding a scribbly outline to the bauble and then um, doing what I call my kind of barbed wire look, where it's like a few little scribbles and little hashes and, and dots and things, just to, I don't know, I just really love the way it looks. Um, it just gives it that really arty kind of a look. I really need to do some more cards like this because I really love them. And then I'm just using um, a load of little ovals to create that kind of chain look. And I don't think it matters if you go off a little bit wonky as well. I think that just adds to the like whimsical charm of the card. And also adding the black outline um, is going to help later because I'm going to stamp the snowflakes on in black um, and having the black outline on there is going to help them blend into the actual design and not look like they're just stamped on afterwards. So I'm using some really gorgeous um, ornate snowflakes that were from a magazine freebie ages ago um, and just mixing up the different sizes of snowflakes and everything to create um, you know a linear pattern on some baubles a random pattern on others or just one focal uh, snowflake on other ones as well and I'm just using a little bit of a post-it note um, to mask off certain areas where I want the snowflake to look like it's curving around the side of the bauble as well You can add as much or, you know, as little stamping as you want to to 
them. You could you could draw it all on yourself as well if you wanted. Um, I just think to get that kind of detail um, in the snowflakes that I would be happy with, it would take me ages. So I thought I'd cheat and use stamps because it's quicker. And then to add to that, even more to that arty kind of feel, um, I'm just splatting on a little bit of black acrylic ink with a paintbrush. Then for the sentiments, I'm using my Dymo labeler again. Um, I know I'm going to get more questions about this. This one is you can't buy it anymore because it's like it's older than me. Um, but there is a brand called Motex M O T E X that um, sell one that looks like this. So um, if you were interested in one, you could just Google that and see if you could find one. But I've not um, ever actually used one of them, so I don't know if they are exactly the same. But the Dymo one that they do still make is called like the Junior one, and it just it just doesn't look as nice. All the letters are much further apart. Um, they used to make them so much better in the old days. And then uh, to add the sentiments on, I'm just snipping uh, between them. I think two of them I done Merry Christmas, and one I did Christmas wishes. And then I'm adding a little bit of glue to them because this was some old tape. As I say, the machine's older than me, so the tape's probably older than me and I don't trust its adhesive. I really love this one. I think that was my favourite one, with the three of the baubles together. So I'm just going to fold my card blanks and trim them to the right size. And again, as I've said in loads of my videos, I like to do um, a strip of tape all the way around the perimeter of the card and then one diagonally across the centre as well. So I, I think that's everything I do on these cards. So thank you so much for um, watching the video today and any of the others that you've watched throughout my Crafty Advent series. I know, I've had quite a lot of comments saying they really like... Um, me doing a voiceover on the videos. It does take a really long time though because I have to edit the video twice and upload it twice and it's, yes. But anyway, um, I might make it like a regular thing of maybe doing one or two a month just picking up the footage from an old video and doing a voiceover on it. So I'm not promising but there might be a few more like other oh, crafty advent videos. Um, however, there will still be um, talking videos because I've merged my three channels now, so Crafty Potential, Arty Potential and Crafty Potential Know How are all going to be on, on this channel, so um, my Know How ones are all talking ones anyway, so you will have them to look forward to, and I have an 11 part series on acrylic pouring that I haven't edited yet, and I have about 30 other videos that I haven't edited yet, so um, between now and like February, those ones will go up and then there will still be one every day of all of the uh, know-how and arty videos that I'm re-uploading to this channel. So I hope you're enjoying all those re-uploads as well and I hope you have a wonderful Christmas too. Thank you so much for watching. Bye! <laughs>